Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of What Would That Sound Like? The show where I take the tips and tricks from today's top thought leaders and show you how to communicate them to your teams, companies, and conferences. I'm Sean Patrick and I just finished my time with Roger Connors and Tom Smith's book called Change the Culture, Change the Game. Uh, cultural change, we've all probably dealt with it. If you haven't, chances are we probably have areas of culture on our teams that need to be changed, whether that is uh, division or disunity in our team. Maybe it's uh, a focus on uh, more safer business practices. Maybe it's uh, making sure our teams aren't siloed, but we're unified. Whatever it is, there's probably an area of our team, of our companies, of our culture that needs to be changed in order to be working more efficiently, more effectively, and having a happier, healthier team. So what I wanna do is give you the three skills you need before you even start culture change on your team. I'm gonna break down the three skills needed to make that happen. So let's find out what would that sound like. In order just to enter the game here, in order to feel comfortable and confident and, and set you up for success to make whatever culture change needs to happen on your teams or in your companies, each one of us as leaders needs to make sure that we have three specific skills, and I'm gonna break those down today. We're gonna to talk about the three skills needed for culture change. The first one is this, it's the skill to lead the change. Now that sounds kind of dumb or obvious, but let me break it down. As leaders, we have a tendency and an ability to delegate things out. This is not one of those things that we can delegate. If this culture, culture change is important enough to put our team through it, to get us painfully from point A to point B, we have to be the ones leading it. If we delegate it out or ship it off to another department or person, it communicates that it's not really that big of a deal for us and people aren't as likely to get on board. If it's important enough to you to make this culture change, it has to start at the top and trickle down. This isn't something we can delegate. So you need to know that you have not just the skill, but you have the time, effort, energy, and ability to lead, not just start, but follow through with whatever cultural change needs to happen on your team. So that's the first skill, is the skill to lead that change. The second skill is this, it's the skill to respond back to criticism. If your immediate response was, I'm fine with that, I'm good with criticism. Take a second, ask somebody close to you that you trust, how do I do when I'm criticized? You need to have a really accurate understanding of how you do with criticism because if you're gonna create this culture change and lead it, you will have criticism and complaints coming your way because none of us like to change and if we say we like to change, usually what we mean is we like change when we're in control of it, not when it's happening to us and that's what's gonna be happening and that's what your team is going to be experience, experiencing as your walking through this cultural change with them. So you need to know that complaining and conflict and criticism is going to happen and you have to have the ability to hear that, to listen to it, and to respond appropriately. I'm gonna give you just two quick steps to curb some of that criticism before you even get there. So the first thing I wanna say in terms of curbing criticism is you need to make sure when you're first communicating this to your team, whatever it is, you need to be super clear and identify the belief that you want your whole company or your whole team to share. You need to be specific on it, don't be vague. If safety needs to be a higher priority, tell your team, hey, I feel like we've, I know that we've been a bit lax on safety, we've had some more accidents or whatever it is in your company, we need to make sure that we're focusing on that in, in this time and this is how we're gonna do it. If it's uh, disunity, you can say, hey, I know that a lot of us have been experiencing this feeling of being fragmented or, or siloed in, in our team, on our team, and I wanna make sure that as we move forward, it's my goal to unify us so we have a better product or service. Whatever it is, you have to be very specific with identifying what you want people to believe in and come alongside of you and be a part of. So that's the first thing that will help curb that criti curb criticism initially, because if they are a little unsure what's going on, and they don't have full buy-in to what you're doing or what you're trying to change, you're gonna run into a lot of bonus criticism that you don't want or need. Second thing is enroll people and get people in a process of providing feedback on the change. Um, and I would plan that out. So if uh, you've got five people on your team, 
communicate that, hey, during this change, I wanna make sure that we're on the same page. I wanna make sure I'm getting your feedback. I wanna make sure I'm understanding how you're feeling, how we're doing. So each week, for the next five weeks, I'm gonna send out an email to each of you individually or one of you a week, and I want to get your thoughts on how this is going because it's that important to me that I'm not just steamrolling you, we're not just forcing this on, on you, but we're all doing this as a team. You want to invite your team, you wanna invite your employees to be a part of that so they can feel like they are a part of it and that they can buy into it even more. On teams that I've led in the past, I've found that you have to do more than just telling them that, hey, I want your feedback. Because just saying that typically isn't enough for people to feel confident to give it to you. A lot of the times you have to ask for it. You can't just say, I welcome your feedback because most people won't give it to you. You have to say, hey, I'm going to email all you guys after this meeting uh, with a couple questions. Please be honest about what you're doing. If you have a large company or you're worried that people won't be honest, you can even send out a survey that people can take anonymously to give you some good insight. Half of this is for them to buy in and feel like they're a part of this process. The other half is truly to give you data and understanding of how it's going or how your people feel about it so you can use that to better navigate your cultural change. So those are the first two skills and then two tips on curbing some criticism. The third skill is you have to have the skill to facilitate. We talked about that a little bit a second ago, but you need to encourage dialogue and teamwork and collaboration. Um, cultural change is hard. There was uh, one team that I led uh, years ago that had about 300 people on it. And I remembered I was the guy who got hired to come in and make the really difficult changes that the person before me couldn't do, didn't do, whatever it was. And I remember standing in front of all these people and saying, hey, we've got some cultural issues we need to change. And I defined it and laid it out for them. I said, here's where we've been. Here's where I'd really like us to go. People were really on board with it. But I needed to tell people the reality of where we're going and the hard work that it was going to require out of all of us. And I told them that. I said, hey, some of you guys I can tell are really on board with this. Others I can tell um, not so much. And it may be the end of the road for you guys. Um, and I want to tell you that I understand that and truly we will miss you. But the truth is in culture change, what I've heard growing up, you know, changing culture is like turning a big ship. It takes a lot of time to get it to where you want it to be. You know, when I had heard that, I always thought of one of those carnival cruise ships, like, oh yeah, this'll be fun, we're all on board, we're on the same page. No, it's more like those old wooden Viking ships where you see uh, drawings and paintings of it and it's just pouring rain and huge waves and everyone's under the deck rowing and rowing. and ro It's more like that. Some of you guys, I know you're here and you wanna be a part of it. Some of you guys, I know this is just the end of the line for you, but I gotta tell you and be upfront with you right now, I need people who are going to row because what we're doing is so important that we've all got to be aligned. We've got on the same, got to be on the same page. We can't have half the people rowing forward and half the people rowing backwards. We're all going to move towards the same goal, and I need people who are going to row. Casting some vision like that, um, letting people know that it may or may not be the right time for them to be on the team or in the company anymore gives them freedom to buy in or choose whether or not they're going to be a part of that and also gives you the freedom to say, hey, you know, I noticed that after this thing, you haven't followed through or whatever it was. It seems like maybe you're not on board with this. And I want to talk to you about your future with us. It gives you a lot of cool opportunities, but it sets the vision and sets the tone that you are a facilitator in dialogues, that you're communicating clearly about what needs to be done. And then I'd say you need to, as we mentioned before, try to facilitate some feedback. Because if you are just getting your people to row all the time and not hearing what they have to say, that our oars are broken or that it's freezing down here under the ship, or I think we're, we're a little bit off. If you're not giving them that opportunity to give you feedback, you may not see how just slightly over a long period of time they're diverging from the ultimate cultural change. So you need to have the skill to facilitate. So the three skills you need to have before you can even start making that cultural change, the skill to lead that change, the skill uh, to respond back to criticism and conflict, and the skill to facilitate. If you can lock those three things in, you'll set yourself up for so much success as you jump into whatever cultural change you're looking to make. I hope that's helpful. It really is just the beginning steps. It's not necessarily how you can make that change. If you wanna check out this book, it's called Change the Culture, Change the Game by Roger Connors and Tom Smith. 
um, this is just like the the before you can even get into it you want to make sure you have these skills before you're playing in the NBA you want to make sure that you've got great basketball skills you can shoot you can dribble you can do all these things before you can make the cultural change you want to make sure that you can do these three things as well it will save you so much time so much pain so much stress so much emotional exhaustion if you can focus on these three things lock them in as best you can and then try to make that change to, to implement that change so I hope that helps for you if you need more information feel free to reach out to me at my personal email, seanpatrickdj at gmail.com, S-E-A-N, patrickdj at gmail.com. If you want to connect, I'd love to be a part of whatever networks you're on, whether it's LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, you can find me basically uh, any place on the web at seanpatrickdj. And if you've got a keynote presentation or anything coming up, make sure to click that link below and I will send you my personal PDF for free to make sure you're prepared for that. So until next time, we'll see you right back here on What Would That Sound Like?